Welcome back to part two, year one of your history lesson this week. So do you remember, we were talking about that the Victorians had many fireplaces and big, thick, heavy curtains. And I asked you to have a think about why that was. Well, it's because there were no radiators, there were no central heating. You didn't turn the heating on when you were feeling a little bit cold. So every room had a fireplace in. So do you remember when we were looking at the hall, it had a fireplace in there, didn't it? All the bedrooms had fireplaces in. And uh, do you remember in our, our lesson before, I told you I live in a little Victorian house. In my bedroom, I have a fireplace too. And my parents, they live in a Victorian house and they have a fire in their living room and in their back room and in my bedroom that's at their house too. So every room had their fireplace and every day they would have to lay the fire with wood and coal. Now, lots of Victorian homes had servants and it was the first job in the morning to light all the fires before the family woke up so it was nice and warm. Now, I've got a couple of pictures here. Now, we've already seen this picture, haven't we, here? Now, this lady here, she's pouring something over the fire. I wonder what she's doing there because there's lots of steam. It isn't smoke there. It's lots of steam. Mm -hmm. She's actually putting the fire out because you couldn't leave the fires burning and go to bed because that would be dangerous in case any of the sparks came out of the fire and went onto the carpet. So if we have a look here, if the fire, if the sparks came out of the carpet, sorry, out of the fire and went onto the carpet, it could burn the carpet. So often people would have fire guards in front of their fire as well to stop any of the spitting wood or coal coming out. Now, this is a very ornate car, uh, fire here as well. And this part here is called the hearth. And that's the part in front of the fire. There's the hearth here and there's the hearth here. And often it was tiled. Again, it's to stop that in case the fire spits out any um, hot um, bits of coal or wood, it would land on the hearth. Now, underneath the hearth here, sorry, the fire here, you'd pull this out and that's where you'd have to sweep up all the ashes in the morning. Do you remember I told you as well, because the Victorians had to think of different things to pass the time. Here's a lady and gentleman and they're sitting there and I think she might be knitting and he's helping her, I think, and they're working together. That was one of the things that people used to do back then. So it used to be very, very cold, and that's why they would have big, thick curtains to draw across the windows to keep the drafts out, to try and keep lots of heat inside the houses. So they would light fires in all the rooms, and they would have thick curtains to draw to keep it nice and warm. So remember, they didn't have electricity, nor did they have heating. Oh, it would have been very cold. Would you have liked to have lived then? Hmm. Let's move on to our next one then. Oh! Now, let me move my picture here. Yeah. Okay. So bathrooms were very, very different as well. So lots of homes didn't have bathrooms at all. Toilets were a new invention and only rich people could afford to have them inside their houses. So lots of people had to go outside to an outhouse. And they also kept chamber pots or potties underneath their beds so they wouldn't have to go outside at night. Could you imagine having to get up in the middle of the night when it's cold and dark, especially when it's been snowing, and go outside to go for a wee? Would you like to do that? No, I don't think I would either. But also in the morning, if you did go in the chamber pot, somebody had to empty it in the morning. Oh no! So I've got here a range of different outhouses. So I'm going to move my picture back up here. <laughs> so here we've got different outhouses. So sometimes they might have been attached to the house. I love this picture here. This is a gentleman that still has his outhouse fully functioning. That means still fully working at the moment. And he seems very proud of that. But there aren't any houses now that have toilets outside. We have to, if we have, to have toilets inside now for safety and health. But here you can see different types of toilets. So here there would have been just one toilet on its own. Here they, they might have had some water for you to wash your hands afterwards. And can you see here the gas lamp that's hanging up? Because it would have been very dark going outside with no lights. Um, and here the toilet is just inside there. How funny to go outside. 
Though I'm thinking, hmm, if they didn't have toilets in the house, do you think they had bathrooms in the house? <gasps> do you know they didn't? They didn't have bathrooms. They. So for washing, what they had to do, most people just had a jug and a basin like this. This is a very pretty one, isn't it? My grandma used to have one and it was pink. It was very nice, but it was very cracked. She'd had to glue it back together lots of times. So what they would do is they would put their jug of water and this was the basin that it would sit in and they would pour the water from the jug into the basin and they would wash their hands and face with that. But when they needed to have a bath, so they didn't have a bath regularly, not like how you and I have baths or showers. There was no showers back then either. They would only have it maybe once, maybe twice a month, not very often at all. You can imagine it was a little bit smelly in Victorian times. <laughs> so when they needed to have a bath, what they did was they put a tin bath here. Can you see these tin bathtubs in either the kitchen or the living room, so the warmest part of the house? And they would have they would fill it with water and then they would have a bath there. So this one in this picture here is in front of the fire in the kitchen. And if you can see just on top of the um, the range there, that's what that is called. That's where they used to do their cooking as well. There's a kettle and in that kettle they are boiling water to fill up the bath. So I've got some pictures here of some children in a bath uh, in front of the fire because the bath would be taken out, put down, and if you were the oldest person in the house, you would get the fresh bath water. But as the, the day went on, everybody would have a bath in the same bath water. So if you were the littlest in the house, you would get all the dirty, horrible bath water. Are you the littlest in your house? Oh no, that would not have been good in Victorian times for you. <laughs> You'd have all the smelly water. That's not nice, is it? It's because they didn't have running water all the time. So they'd have to go and collect the water. So they didn't want to keep emptying it out. And the bath would be very heavy with all that water. So you'd have one lot of water and everyone would bath in it over the course of the day. That's why they didn't bath often. So here, yes, you can see one of the mums is bathing the children here. Another little girl, she's sitting in her bath there. How would you feel about having a bath in front of the fire in the kitchen or the living room? Would you like to do that? Mm, I don't know if I would. I think I'd find it a little bit funny. I don't think I'd like it. I love my baths and I like putting candles around and making it smell really nice. I don't think this bath would smell very nice. Do you? <laughs> okay, let's move on then. My picture's in the way again. <laughs> so Victorians love to make their homes fancy and elaborate. It was really beautiful. So they loved pattern wallpaper. And if any of you got any brothers or sisters or cousins in year six, you know that they have been looking at William Morris. And he was a designer of wallpaper who loved pictures of flowers. So he would do prints of flowers on his wallpaper. He was very popular in Victorian times. So they loved decorative knickknacks. So that's like just things around the house, like ornaments. So anything that their homes that made anything that would make their homes look fashionable, they really loved it. So let's have a look in this picture. What decorative things can you see? Pause the video. Have a chat with the person in the room. What did you notice? I could see loads of pictures. In fact, actually, if we move. Got a bigger picture. I can see lots of pictures again. Cushions, because obviously we sat and we read in Victorian times. The big, thick, heavy curtains again. Plants and a plant pot and a table. And I can also see some little plates up here as well in another cupboard. Mm. So this was just one area of their house. Now, the Victorians had lots of different areas in their homes, depending on how big they were. So smaller houses would just have the kitchen and their living room, and then a bedroom or two upstairs. But the bigger the, the Victorian house, the more rooms that they would have. So 
a scullery was usually a room at the back of the house, so near the kitchen, and it would usually be used for laundry and washing up and any dirty work that would need to do. So if they, there's a lot of the people then would work um, in factories and they would get very, very dirty, so they'd have to come home, and maybe they'd have to take their clothes off at the door because they didn't want the dirty clothes in the house. They'd also have a drawing room. So they'd have their living room and that'd be the room that they would do all their things in, like talking and reading and playing games. But they'd have a drawing room, which was a room that was only used for best times. So it'd be when people were coming round and they'd knock on the door and they would take them into the drawing room. And it would be where all the fancy ornaments would be, all the best sofas and cushions. And it would always have a lovely fire in there and the best wallpaper and pictures on the door, um, on the wall. So that would be where they would have guests to come. And then a nursery was a room upstairs where the children spent most of their time. They wasn't allowed to come downstairs and be with the adults. The children had to stay in their nursery. They couldn't come down and play and sit in the living room like how you and I do now with our families. That wasn't allowed. There was a saying, children should be heard, should be seen and not heard. So often children had to be very, very quiet and stand very, very still if they were going to see the adults in the house. Would you like to do that? I don't think I would. I like talking too much. <laughs> okay, now then. I want you to have a think. Do you think you'd like to have lived in Victorian times? Yes or no? And why? You can have a chat with the person in your room about this, um, or have a chat to your teddies, or have a chat to your brother or your sister. So would you like to have lived in Victorian times? And, and think about why. Before you do that, though, I want to show you a work that you've got. So you've got two, um, got one worksheet, and then you've got another um, attachment, but it's just pictures. And I've said to your parents not to print it off. So it's just pictures for you to have a look at. And you're going to investigate, just like how we've been doing, we've been looking at those pictures. And you're going to look at all the different pictures and you're going to decide which ones are living rooms, which ones are kitchens, which are bedrooms, which rooms have fireplaces and which rooms have mirrors, which rooms have pattern wallpaper, which rooms have candles or gas lamps and which rooms have framed pictures. And which ones do you think were the richest? Which do you think were the poorest? And which you like the best and why? So think about all the things we've talked about, about Victorian homes. And you're going to use that to look at your pictures in a minute. Now, remember, the pictures are not going to be colourful because photographs were only just being invented then. So they're going to be that sepia colour, that brown colour. So you'll have to just use your imagination to think what colours there might be in there. Have a lovely time investigating that today, year one. I really look forward to seeing your answers and I hope you really enjoy going back to the past and back to being a Victorian. Enjoy today, year one, and you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.